Dr. Tayo, thanks for joining us on Health Connection. Thanks for having me. Our topic is birth control, the basics. Uh -huh. And so let's get just as basic as we can. What are the different types of birth control available today? All right, well there are, um, there's the kind that's over the counter, which we're more familiar with. There's, um, you know, the condoms and the uh, diaphragms and spermicides. Most people are familiar with that. The important thing is those are the ones that prevent STDs, sexually transmitted diseases. And then there's the prescription kind, and there's the patient-controlled kind and the doctor-controlled kind. And out of the patient-controlled kind, the most familiar one is birth control pills. And if a woman is a really good pill taker, um, they're very effective, but you have to take them every day, usually the same time of the day. So if they're not a good pill taker, there's a lot of other options. Um, as far as patient-controlled, there's the uh, Nuva ring, small plastic ring, goes into the vagina. It's the same place that a tampon would go. You put it in for three weeks, take it out for a week, have a period. And so you only have to remember it once a month. Um, beyond that, there's the doctor-controlled one, so the Depo shot. Um, people are familiar with it's usually it's every three months. Um, you don't have to think about it, you just have to come to the doctor to get it done. And um, the only complaints with that sometimes is some weight gain, and then um, you can only be on it for a certain amount of time, three years usually. There's also the uh, intrauterine devices, so that goes all the way up into the uterus. Um, the, there's two kinds, there's the Mirena and then the Copper IUD. Um, the Mirena has the hormones, most women don't have periods, they like them a lot, it's five years of birth control. The Copper one is 10 years of birth control, there's no hormones, sometimes your period is a little less regular with that, but um, there's those two options that are put in in the office just almost like a regular pap smear. Uh, you don't have to have had a child to have those, um, and they're good options. And then the other option is a, a Nexplanon. It goes in the soft part of the arm here. It's like a small plastic bar with hormones in it. Um, it's three years of birth control. It's really marketed for the younger women who aren't in a stable relationship. Um, the risk of the IUDs is if you were to get a sexually transmitted disease, they would have to come out, they would be pulled, but the, the next plan on can stay for three years, no matter what, so. You just gave us a smorgasbord. Yeah, sorry about that. That's okay, <laughs> no, I'm glad you did. Okay. But of that smorgasbord, what's the most common form of birth control? The pills are still the most common form. Uh, it's partially because people know about them more and they're not as aware of the other options. Um, and they're very effective, but you know, even the smartest women have a very hard time taking a pill every single day because they're young, healthy women. They don't take pills on a regular basis usually. So they're still most popular and mostly effective as long as you take them like you should. Well, let's clear that up. Mm -hmm. If you fail to take the pill for one day, is mm -hmm. your protection lost? It is. It, I can't quote the percentage, but certainly it, it definitely goes down. Um, there's ways to catch up. Um, if you've missed a day or two days, it's all in the package. But yes, the effectiveness goes down. Here's a tough question. Mm -hmm. Is there a best method of birth control? Again, I would say it depends on the woman and how good she is. So if, if she's not a good pill taker, the pills are probably not the best method for her, you know? Um, as far as percentages go, they're all in the 98 to 99% effectiveness rate. Um, I didn't mention tubules, by the way. Those are the permanent uh, birth control sort of way, ways of doing things. but. Um, Anyway, those are, you know, the pills, the uh, patches, and um, I didn't mention patches either, but the shot, those are all um, in the 90 to 98 to 99 percent effective range. So, Well, with respect to any given patient, how do you determine which form of birth control is the best choice? Depends on their age, if they've had babies or not, um, and, you know, their uh, willingness to, you know, control their own birth control or not. So you're making an assessment of how compliant a patient is, how, yeah, yeah. You know, how disciplined the patient is? I suppose, it, like, you know, birth control pills being kind of the easiest, really, um, as long as I think that the, the woman is able to, you know, take it on a regular basis and it's going to prevent pregnancy, then I think that's great. Otherwise, I, I do try to convince them to go with the longer options because even myself, I'm, you know, it's very difficult to remember every day, you know, so for effectiveness, you know, some of the other options might be better for them. What about, for the most common forms of birth control, mm -hmm. what are the risks attended to them and what about those risks? 
So um, all pills have risks. Um, hormones have increased risk of clotting just in general. So uh, young women, old women, they all um, have a tendency to clot when on pills. Uh, most of the time the risks are less than the benefits. Um, however, if you're also a smoker, you have a little bit increased risk. So we might choose a different pill for you if you are also a smoker and also if you're around the time of menopause. Which birth control methods are helpful in preventing sexually transmitted infections? Just condoms, believe it or not. So that's a barrier method. It's going to keep you know, the disease from crossing from one to the other and uh, otherwise otherwise, uh, you should know your partner. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> All right. Well, um, let me, let's get into some basic reproductive biology here. Okay. How soon after a woman has given birth can she again conceive yep. and get pregnant? So um, as, as soon as three weeks afterwards. Normally you don't start that first cycle right away. You might not release an egg, but the possibility exists and to have a baby that soon would be very difficult. I mean financially, you know, on the body every sort of way. So if a woman has had a baby, uh, you know, Initially, they recommend pelvic rest for a certain amount of time afterwards, but then when she goes to her postpartum visit, she should really probably be put on birth control then. So as little as three weeks after pregnancy. Let's talk about as we move into middle age, mm -hmm. a woman who's beginning perimenopause or even is in menopause or postmenopause, mm -hmm. anything she needs to do about birth control? Yeah, so you can still get pregnant. That's the important thing. Um, around 50 is when menopause usually happens. Um, as young as 30, I've read recently, but um, once you've gone an entire year without a period, you're considered in menopause. But up until then, you know, eggs are released sporadically and pregnancy can still happen. So I would recommend a birth control, hormone or non-hormone, um, during that time. Women in that perimenopause, close to menopause time, need to be on a low estrogen birth control pill if they're going to go with hormones. Let's talk about the future of birth control. What does it hold? Are there new advances, changes on the horizon with respect to all of this? There are um, a couple interesting ones. There's one about um, to come out, I believe, in Canada, and it's a uh, gel that you would just apply, they say, on the abdomen. The woman would do every day um, to prevent ovulation. They've also, they're making a like extended nuva ring, so the nuva ring that goes in every month it could last a year at some point, so they'll put it in, take it out for a week, and then clean off, put the same one back in, and it would be a year-long thing. They're always trying to develop a male uh, birth control pill. They haven't quite got it yet, but um, they're continually working on that. That's another thing. Very well. Dr. Mm -hmm. Learn something. Thank you very much. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>